Hi everybody and welcome to today's tutorial. Um, today we're going to be talking about bagels, which is something fairly near and dear to my heart. Um, so I was born in Montreal in the East End, a very French and uh, new immigrant kind of neighborhood. There was uh, a lot of Greek, a lot of Italian, a lot of Eastern European, all humble working class people. Um, so my, one of my earliest memories was um, uh, was going shopping with my grandparents um, in an area around Saint Laurent Boulevard, um, and it was it was where all of the the new immigrants had their market stalls and they had their shops, their delicatessens and their bakeries. There'd be a Greek bakery, a Jewish bakery, an Italian bakery, French bakery. Um, it was all real, authentic, you know, goods from home, the stuff that they couldn't get in Canada. They went out and they opened up their own small businesses. Um, so one of my favorite things that I used to do with my dad was uh, when we were around that neighborhood, occasionally I'd go shopping with my dad as well. Um, we'd go to St. Viateur Bagels, which is a famous um, bakery, a bagel bakery in Montreal. Um, you know, I remember walking in the first time and there's wood burning ovens, there's these bagels lined up on long sticks that get sl slid into the ovens, there's it's bustling, there's men rolling bagels in front of you, there's the shouting and bagels being bagged up and but they all came out of the um, the oven hot and fresh and you know it's like no experience like no other at all it was just like the smell of the burning fire you know the, the sweetness in the air from the bagels boiling the fresh baked bagel smell as well it was all you know it was just mesmerizing as a kid you know and it really is it, something that really stuck with me but not much has changed to this day but the best bit was always walking out with a bag of fresh bagels um, there's just nothing like it. There's just nothing in this world like a hot, fresh bagel that's just come out of the oven. They're just the best. And there's so much history to them as well, you know. The, um, the recipe is said to date back to the 1880s. Um, they're part of the fabric of Montreal. They're part of the city. Um, there's a soul and there's a personality to this humble creation of the bagel. Um, and it's, you know, it, it screams passion and history and it's, it's a pretty special thing. And I, I think there's not a lot of food like that anymore to this day. Certain people in certain cities will know what I mean by this. When you see a bag of bagels that has like a grocery store um, in a plastic bag with a use by date in a, of, um, in a week, that kind of breaks my heart a bit because your bagels should be hot and fresh on the day. Maybe a couple of days later you can toast them. But, um, but people who think bagels are just something that you buy in the grocery store like a bag of white bread um, it, it makes me sad that people don't get to experience um, fresh bagels the way that I did as a kid growing up and the way that you still can in certain places. Bagels are something like if you want a bagel you don't go to the grocery store, you go to the bagel shop. Well, that whole area of Montreal it, it was in quite quite a bohemian kind of area in, in I guess between the, you know, the 50s, 60s, 70s, um, even 80s and, um, and later. Um, you know, this is where Leonard Cohen hung out. This was his neighborhood. Like a, there's a real kind of character to it. There's a real feeling behind all of it, you know, and it's, um, and you can see it, you can feel it. I, I can feel Montreal and his music, specifically that area. Um, sometimes it's tangible, sometimes it's very subtle, but it's, um, to me, it's something you can feel and it's something very Montreal. I left Montreal in Canada and I started having real homesickness. I miss that essence of Montreal. I miss the uniqueness, that vibe, that feeling those smells, those sounds, those flavors. So I, I decided to build my own tribute to Montreal um, with my own bagel shop in, uh, in New Zealand. Um, to me, it was much more than a business. It was a real connection to home. It was a connection to my family and my memories and, uh, and a unique time and place in the world that has changed a little, but the food is, is still the same and the bagels are still there. Um, to bring it all together, um, Leonard Cohen, who came to the venue that I was working at before I opened my bakery, um, it was a real honor to have him there and look after him and see him perform. Um, but the second time he performed at that venue, um, I'd left the venue and I was running my, I was running my my bagel shop in Delhi, and I was asked to bring, uh, I was asked to bring Leonard Cohen a bag of my bagels and some Montreal smoked meat. Um, for his dressing room and this was a real kind of honor for me, a real career highlight uh, that I cherish. Um, it, was, um, it was a real bringing together of my old world and my new life overseas and it made me even more homesick, I I'd say, but I, 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 stayed, I stayed for a show and it was captivating and mesmerizing and, and a real emotional and spiritual experience. Um, and that was his last ever performance before he passed away. Um, so I'm very grateful that I was 
a part of it in my own in my own little way. It was a very special time. Enough about that. Have a go at making these. I think they're pretty fantastic. One of the best bagels you'll ever have. Um, anyways, I hope you enjoy. Thanks so much. Okay, so here we go. These are, here's our ingredients list. Now I'm making a modified version of the original Saint Viateur bagel recipe. Um, but don't panic, the original recipe is below, you can make that if you like. I use a liquid barley malt, um, not a dried malt, but you can use a dry malt powder, I just find it a little bit chewy, um, which is part of the charm of the same Viettori bagel, but um, I add a little bit of salt to mine as well. It's just my modification and what I did in New Zealand. Um, but by all means, the original recipe is there, make that. So we'll start off by adding some honey to our water. Um, the honey will help glaze the bagels, it'll also help the seeds stick, and it gives the bagels an extra little bit of sweetness as well. So now, just add all of your ingredients into your mixing bowl or your, um, or your uh, or mixer. Um, obviously a mixer is better because you, you won't have to do everything by hand, because this is a low hydration dough, so it's quite tough. And the flour we're using is a high protein, high gluten flour, ideally. Um, or use a bread flour if that's what you've got, or just use normal flour if that's what you have. It'll still come out quite nice. Obviously, um, with the high gluten, high protein flours, they are a bit tougher and a, hard, a little bit chewier, which is chewy, which is part of it. Now you'll see I'm also using brown sugar. The recipe calls for white sugar, but again, I don't keep white sugar around that often, so I just use brown, and it just gives it a little bit more of a multi flavor. And that's totally fine. Um, so put everything into your mixing bowl. Um, you want to have really hot water to it as well. Um, so we'll get that started. So for this volume of uh, flour that we're using, you want to boil your kettle and let it uh, let it cool down a bit. And let the water cool down a bit, and then you'll mix it in once you've uh, mixed everything through. Now the yeast that you use is very important. So I like using a fresh yeast. Now if you haven't got fresh yeast, you can use rehydrated yeast. If you haven't got that, you'll see I sneakily stuck in some of my sourdough starter into this recipe. Um, so I made sourdough bagels. Um, you can do that if you like. Um, what I would say about using a sourdough starter and also dry yeast is that you want to let it rehydrate and you want to let the dough develop a little bit. Um, otherwise, um, it won't uh, it won't prove as much as you want. It might be a little bit dense unless you give it a little bit of resting time. But certainly that's not a traditional way of making St. Beatur bagels. St. Beatur bagels are a continuous process. So they use fresh yeast. The yeast is activated straight away. It gives it a kick and it's, and it's, and it's working straight away. So there's no resting time, you mix it, you make it, you shake the bagels, you boil them, you seed them, and off they go. Um, it's a very unique process. Um, not all bagels are made like that. Certainly there's a difference between New York and Montreal bagels. So, having said that, if you want to make New York bagels, make this recipe. It's exactly the same as any bagel dough that you'd want to do. Obviously this one's very special, but just prove your dough out a little bit. Um, so shape your bagels and then let them prove in a warm place for an hour or until they're the desired size that you want them to be and so sure enough they will prove to that size um, then you can poach them and you'll have New York style bagels um, but that's the that's the only difference really so you want to keep kneading these uh, either on low on your mixer if you feel confident that you've got a good mixer and they can handle this tough dough um, you can you can um, put it up the speed a little bit but keep an eye on it you don't want your machine to uh, to wear out if you start smelling that uh, burnt kind of engine smell, turn it off, pull it out, and just start kneading it by hand. Let it, or let your engine or your motor on your bagel um, on your mixer cool down. So what we're doing here is we're taking a third of our bagel dough aside. We're going to put that aside before we finish uh, kneading. Now we're going to knead the rest of it. Now that one that one third that we're doing there, that's going to be our onion bagels. So we'll just continue kneading um, the rest of the dough until it's nice and smooth and glossy, and and you'll see you'll tell that it's just unified. And consistent, and it's uh, you, you can it just feels like it's ready, and it looks like it's ready. You can probably already tell the difference between the two in the in the video right now. Once you're done kneading um, your bigger mass of dough, you're going to take your onion bagel dough and bring that forward, pat it down slightly, like I've done there, and then you're going to add onion flakes. Um, now the onion flakes are also obviously going to flavor your your bagels. Um, but they're also going to add a bit of texture to them, so you're going to knead these in now. So you're going to continue kneading so until you've got the same sort of consistency as you've got with your main mass of dough, but this is uh, obviously you're going to have bits of onion in it. So um, yeah, so just keep kneading that till it's well incorporated, and then that should be that should be about it. Um, and then we're going to get into the most complicated part of this recipe, which is shaping the dough. So I always start with my onion bagels. Um, now you might want to let that rest a little bit, depending on the yeast that you've used. If you feel it isn't working, go by feel. If it's not, if it's not working yet, let it rise a little bit, let the yeast kick, kick in. So basically you're going to cut a strip off the dough, 
Now you want to get the shape of the bagel first. You want to get the desired thickness, the shape, the roundness. You want a nice long tube. Imagine your bagel flat and rolled out. That's what you want to start with. Then you're going to wrap it around your hand, like so. Pinch it off and then roll out to um, seal it. So you've got a nice round circle. This takes heaps of practice. Some people are naturals, but it certainly took me lots and lots of practice to get this done. I've made probably millions, millions of bagels. I used to wake up at two in the morning every day and start making bagels. And um, that's what I did. I could do this in my sleep and I, I think I pretty much did sometimes. Um, so like I said, so you wanna cut a strip off your uh, little lump of dough. Then you're going to roll it out into a tube shape, so your bagel shape. It's got the nice, even roundness all the way around, um, or near enough. Um, I'm doing just evening it, evening it out a bit there. Then you're going to wrap it around your hand, pinch it off, and then seal that joint right there. You might want to turn it a little bit just to even out a bit if it's not perfect. Um, but there you go. And having said that, Montreal bagels aren't perfect. They are an oddly shaped. Every one of them is unique, and I think that's what gives them their charm. Um, I like that kind of rusticness. That's, you know, this to me, this is real. So you just carry on with that. Um, so we've done those. Then you're going to put those, um, you're gonna put those onion bagels aside. Um, now, sometimes it does depend on the weather. There's another little factor that's in there. If it's a cold day in my bagel shop in the middle of winter, um, I click on my ovens, I get my boiler started, and sometimes it's just cold, like the, the workbench is cold and the flour is cold, and you just need to let the yeast activate a little bit longer, so you, you just have to let it warm up a bit, let it prove just a little bit longer. Um, but there's a couple of tricks that you can, you, can, you can play with, which I'll explain in a minute when we get to our poaching. Um, just, it's, it is very much a feel kind of thing, so if, you, if it's something not working, don't panic. Just uh, have a little bit of a feel, have a, little, a bit of a play. Listen to my advice, and um, and we'll, and it'll it'll work out. So put those to the side, and then we're gonna start working on the rest of our bagels. Again, same process. Give it a slice. Give yourself a nice strip of uh, dough to work with. Roll out the shape. Nice tube sort of shape. So you've got the bagel shape happening. Wrap it around your hand, pinch it, seal it. Um, same thing over and over again. Um, and you know, if it doesn't work, just, you know, um, if you haven't, if, it, if you've made a terrible one, I try to tuck it into the dough, that, the big lump of dough that I've got, and then start again. Get a new strip, get or cut up, or try again with a new one. Um, but you know this you're doing this for yourself i'm assuming so you know don't put too much pressure on yourself have a play with it if it's not perfect it's not perfect i promise you it's going to taste great though so here we got our bagels we've got our water at a little bit of a simmer so we want it just under a simmer now here's that trick i was going to tell you about on a really cold day what i would do is i would uh, and my yeast isn't quite activating the one i wanted to do i turn down the heat just a little bit so it's just under a simmer and I'll leave the bagels in there just a little bit longer to help get the yeast activated. Now, it, when you do that, it'll take a little bit longer, it'll help the yeast get activated, and when they just start to float to the surface, that's when you want to take them out, um, strain them. Um, now, with the onion ones, we'll just strain them. We'll put them straight onto uh, a baking sheet, and we'll put them straight into the oven. You want to set your oven to the highest heat that, it's, yeah, that it can go at, and um, I put the, you can put them on a tray with parchment paper, not wax paper, it'll stick and you'll be sad. Um, but put them on my paddle here, my pizza paddle, and they're going straight on my pizza stone um, that I've, that's been preheated for about an hour or so. So it's got nice and look, nice and heat in it. If you find when you're cooking them that your bagels aren't haven't cooked evenly, if the bottom's not quite cooked enough, just flip them over. Um, simple as that. They'll um, and they'll come out perfect. So just chuck those in, and then about 10 minutes, maybe a little bit longer, maybe a little bit less, depending on your oven, if it's fan forced, etc. Um, you, you'll, you, you'll know when they're ready. They'll look like this. They'll be nice and golden brown. They'll be glossy, they'll be beautiful, and they'll be great. So you just take those out, put them to the side and let them cool. Then we're going to start working on our sesame poppy seed. And we're also, on this, on today, we're going to make um, an everything bagel. So that's going to have poppy seed, onion, and I put a little bit of garlic as well. So again, 
load up your pot. Don't you don't have to overdo it too much. Um, I probably did, but that's okay. Um, because you want to sort of stir them around, make sure that they don't stick, and um, give them a little bit of stir, and then you're gonna strain them and get ready to seed them. So here we go, we're starting with our sesame bagel. So I've got a nice big bowl full of sesame seeds. But what I do is I, I'll put like um, the warm wet bagel that's dried off slightly, top it in, dip it in the bowl and then sort of sprinkle more sesame seeds on top. You don't really want to overdo it, they'll just sort of fall off. So pop them in the bowl, sprinkle the top and there you go, and then they're ready to go. Um, now just do that um, until they're all covered. Uh, you don't want to let the bagels dry out too much or they won't stick as well. And then you'll just have a whole pile of sesame seeds that'll fall off the bagel later on. Um, it's, not a, it's not a huge deal, but it's uh, you don't want to be wasteful and uh, obviously you want more sesame seeds on your bagel. So again, put those in until they're ready. Um, you'll see them nice and golden brown. You'll see the smell of those beautiful sesame seeds toasting. And uh, there you go. That's a beautiful looking bagel. So you're going to pull those out. Put them, again, put them to the side and let them cool. So next comes our poppy seed bagels. Now what I like to do is I like to season a pan with the poppy seeds. Um, again, poach your bagels. So you've got your poppy seeds uh, um, seasoned on the bottom of the pan. We're gonna take these out. While these are still quite wet, poppy seeds, um, they tend to, if you let the bagels dry out too much, they're not gonna stick at all. So you wanna get your seasoned tray there, and then you're gonna get your wet bagels, pull up them on top, and then sprinkle uh, more poppy seeds on top. Hey. If you want to dip your bagels into uh, poppy seeds and have lots of poppy seeds, do that. My friend Vlad, who might be watching this, told me off for not having enough poppy seeds on my bagels. You can have whatever you want, Vlad. You can have it Vlad's way, you can have it my way. Um, I like the, the sort of like, the way they look there with a little bit on top and a nice sort of coating on the bottom. That's my preference. If ever you like it, you guys can do. Um, honestly, everywhere does it differently. Um, just one more thing, yeah, you'll see what I did there was I patted down those uh, bagels to really help the poppy seeds stick because they tend to fall off a bit if you don't. Um, so there you go. So once you've done that, do your next batch. And this is the this is our everything bagel. So that's got poppy seeds, onion flakes, sesame seeds, and I put a little bit of garlic powder in there as well. Um, certainly not traditional, but very popular. Um, so you just, uh, again, just dip those in like I did with the sesame seeds. And then load them up on your paddle and, and bake them like you did all the rest. So once these are all baked off, the first thing you've got to do when they come out of the oven, let them rest for a couple of minutes. It's hard to wait longer than that. And then just get yourself uh, a break off a piece of that bagel and have a taste because these are just the best and you have to eat them hot out of the oven. Um, it's the best thing you can do. Bit of cream cheese, whatever you want to do. It, do it doesn't matter, I mean, um, you certainly don't want to toast a fresh bagel. There's no, there's absolutely no point in that. So, you know, I think these are pretty good. Um, and I think you're going to enjoy them too because uh, they're definitely the best bagels I've ever had. Um, anyways, I hope you guys enjoy that. Thank you very much. Please subscribe if you enjoyed this and, uh, and like, and, uh, thanks again.